chatting with me today is Formula 2 driver Jack Crawford. Thank you so much for joining me, Jack. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you? Yeah, I'm really good, actually. Yeah, thanks for asking. Uh, well, we might as well get straight to it and um, start talking about about the, the races and the season. You had you've had quite a difficult start um, to the season. There was no points on the board at all, but then you just leapt straight onto the podium with a very well deserved second place in Melbourne. So, how does it feel to get your first podium? Yeah, it feels really good to get uh, my first podium. I think you know the first four races were really tough and. Bahrain and Jeddah and um, you know we made a lot of changes to the car we worked hard as a team and um, you know it was good to see that hard work paid off in Melbourne and we were fast and in dry and wet conditions and you know the feature race we didn't ID and F but I think we would have scored points there as well so it's good to see all that hard work paying off. Yeah, definitely. Um, you, you've done a lot of traveling in your career. That's the nature of the business, really. But did it feel different going to the other side of the world, to Australia? Yeah, it was a bit a bit different. Um, obviously, the, um, the time change was a big one. Um, you know, traveling, I would think it was a 10-hour time difference, and you're on a basically 24-hour travel. So it was really really tough um, from that standpoint. I mean, I was waking up at, you know, five, six in the morning, even even though my body was still adjusted. Um, so that was that part was tough. And um, yeah, it was my first time in Australia. So cool to see another part of the world. And um, I really had a good experience there. Yeah. Did, did you have any kind of um, plan, like a jet lag plan or anything like that, that was maybe provided to you by your physio? Yeah, beforehand, um, I think I left the, quite a lot later than most drivers. I think I left on the Monday before the race. A lot of people went earlier, but already when I was in the UK, I think my part of my sleep schedule, I was going to bed around six or seven at night and then waking up at three or four in the morning um, just to sort of get um, near the time zone, which it actually worked well, but even you know, by the end, I was still waking up quite early in the morning. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's understandable. It's, it's very tricky just for a few days, isn't it? Um, but do you feel like that's benefited you by going that far? You know, because obviously it, your aim is to get into Formula One and it is the, the furthest race, you know, away geographically. So do you, do you feel it's definitely been a benefit for, for Formula Two to have gone over there? Yeah, I think it was a really cool experience for F2 to to travel somewhere outside of the Middle East and Europe. And I think it was a really cool experience to as well just have Formula 2 um, in Australia because I think the fans were very, very passionate even about Formula 2. So it was really good to get to see. And of course, you know, we get to travel as well, which is cool for um, us younger drivers who probably haven't traveled to that part of the world yet yeah did you do anything in your downside well not really downtime there wasn't much but did you do anything at all i noticed some drivers sort of headed over to the great ocean road some of them headed on to hosier street you know to take pictures with the graffiti is there anything that you, you did there yeah i stayed after the race for three days and i went into the middle of the desert and um just sort of had some relaxing time at a resort and um, sort of just winded down since it was quite a busy um, few weeks between Bahrain and, and Melbourne. Oh, that sounds lovely. Well, how did you find Albert Park as a circuit, you know, compared to others that you've raced on? Um, I really like the track. Um, it's a bit of a weird one because I guess it is technically a street circuit, but to be honest, it doesn't feel like one. Um, you know, the walls are not super close but then again the track was you know super dirty and super green and not much grip on the track so you know there was definitely um you know something different about that but i really like the track and the track characteristics i think it really suited my driving style and um you know i found a lot of a lot of joy driving around the track 
yeah you could definitely tell that you could you could absolutely tell that you def uh, adapted and and that you were probably were enjoying yourself you know from from people that were watching which is is great it's actually good news isn't it for the street circuits that are also approaching um so sprint race of course you got that second on the podium you were really so close to, to passing dennis hauger on that first lap but just couldn't quite make it through and so just talk me through through that from your point of view yeah it was a crazy race um you know before the race you know everyone was telling me that there was no rain on the forecast and um just before the race it started to rain which made it all crazy and um you know we had to go on slicks because it was obviously it was gonna dry out but that made you know the out laps and the formation lap and the in the first lap a few laps of the race really tough um since it was really hard to build tire temperature over such a short lap and um you know we don't have much time to warm the tires on the formation lap and um yeah made the the race really tough at the beginning and you know i was basically the first lap was just about being brave and um you know i think even like the straights on the first lap were not flat so <laughs> that's where I, I caught dennis a bit and and tried to overtake him and unfortunately there was no dry line to to really pass him on which was unfortunate but um you know i, I was actually quicker than dennis the first few laps but i wasn't just wasn't able to pass and um you know at the end of the the first 10 laps i lost drs i started to use my tires a bit too much at the beginning trying to overtake him and um and then of course we had the safety car and you know it started to rain during the safety car and at some point it was undrivable for slicks i remember and i was just thinking i hope we don't go back this lap because uh, i think we'll all drive off the track but um in the end it was okay and um you know we managed to hold on for a second yeah yeah i mean you know it was incredibly imp impressive to to see you stay within that range of drs for a good 13 laps um and then obviously that next lap, i think it was lap 14 wasn't it that there was the safety car after the incident with with jack and juan manuel um and that was quite a lengthy i think it was six laps in all behind that safety car um because a second incident had occurred under it as, as well you know when it was almost called in wasn't it and then a second incident occurred were you aware Aware that something else had happened um or were you wondering why you weren't getting going yeah it was a bit a bit frustrating because um the safety car was going quite slowly because it was starting to rain so for us it was really hard to build tire and brake temperature um i mean basically i was working the whole time on on my brakes and trying to keep temperature in the tires and it was actually a very um tiring safety car period just because um you know we had to do so much work and um i don't i don't, I don't remember why it stayed off for so long um but i'm kind of glad it did because it helped us to to dry the track a bit more yeah i wasn't are you sometimes you're never quite sure if it actually be, uh, benefits or hinders you know I, I wasn't sure if you if you felt like you could have got past dennis at one point and actually won the race and if that safety, safety car spoiled that chance uh yeah i mean i it's always hard to tell and looking back but i honestly i would have liked to to try like uh, i mean there's two sides to it at one point i would have liked to seen you know, we start in the wet conditions and um, I think I had a little bit of an advantage at Dennis at, at that sort of racing condition. So I was sort of hoping we could do that and I could go for the win. But at, on the other side, it could also go very badly and you could crash or people on wet could pass you. So it's, yeah, there's a bit of a, a trade off. And, you know, at, at a certain point, I was just happy to keep second. So yeah yeah i think you might have expressed a little bit of disappointment maybe afterwards but i i think if you perhaps look back and see that you know how close even kush and and arthur were behind you in those closing you know laps 
that um, I think second is, is as I say, you know, quite admirable and absolutely amazing. So uh, we all applaud mm. you for that. Um, and then a completely different story in the feature race. You know, there was contact with uh, Jack Doohan that, that ended your race. Um, what happened from your point of view? Um, yeah, it was it wasn't our best race um, up until that point. I, I I was at the beginning the leading prime runner, which it was looking good for us. Um, but we just didn't have the pace compared to 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 Jack and and Vesti, so we were a bit slower. And I was actually I was actually letting um, Jack go in a way I didn't want to fight too much. And when I was just backing out, um, there was just not enough space and. That's when we we touched tires and I went off. So I was, was actually trying to back out of the move, which I think is what you know hurt me the most. Yeah, I think at some of the other circuits, you know, there's more of a, a runoff area that, that perhaps even if you touched might have been a bit easier to to get back on the circuit. But of course, you know that that's Albert Park for you, and and some of the other circuits like that as well. And you know maybe. Um, yeah. You know, when you're looking at Baku and Monaco with street circuits, that is absolutely straight into the wall there anyway, isn't it? So, you know, I mean, I, I guess you might might be able to take that as incredibly good training, really, for, for those races coming up. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, I think the street courses will be a bit different because um, I think, you know, if you make two cars make contact, both cars are probably going into the wall. Um but yeah, I'm really looking forward to the rest of the street courses. So is it is it good to be back with the high tech team? Yeah, it's really I'm really happy to be back with with high tech. I drove for them in 2021 in F3, like you said, and um, you know, I already knew everyone in the team, so it was it was good to come back to people I already knew and you know I we it already felt like um, you know, I I knew everyone, so the relationship is very good and um, you know, we already started working well um, when I did the preseason test last year in Abu Dhabi. Yeah, I mean, you, you already mentioned anyway that you feel like um, the car was really great in wet and dry conditions. And I think at one point you've been commented as saying it's got mega speed in those conditions. So is the high tech car a bit of a contender this year, do you think? Yeah, I think I think we went through some struggles in in the first two rounds where where Isaac and I weren't particularly always happy and and i think we've worked really hard in those races to improve and from you know the driving side and and from the from the car side to get more what we want and um you know i think we're going in the right direction and um we're only improving so yeah and and it's not too far the location of high tech really is it because you're not in, an incredible distance away from the red bull factory either and of course you're a red bull junior so yeah. what what does that experience offer for you being a red bull junior yeah so i'm living in milton Keynes, so it's only 10 minutes to red bull and in 20 minutes to high tech for me so everything for me is close which is nice and um you know when we have really busy weeks after after race weekends and especially when we have all this back-to-back -back stuff um when we get more deep into the season um you know it'll be super be beneficial i'm able to to work with red bull um to improve and to work with high tech which is which is really nice even though i'll be quite busy it is it is nice to have both um easily accessible so you know what's what's in your mind for the future maybe five years time yeah, I think, of course, my goal would to be in, in Formula One. And, you know, at the moment with AlphaTauri or Red Bull, would, I'd be really, you know, happy with either one. Um, if I looked in, in five years and I was in an AlphaTauri seat or a Red Bull seat, I would, you know, I'd be super happy with that. Um, you know, so, but, you know, it's still a long way to go. And, you know, there's a lot of us vying for those seats. So, um, it is really tough. Yeah, it is. It's a big competition out there, but then there's got a slight benefit with having four seats anyway, isn't there, in F1. Um, so there's a little break, as we've said, between races at the moment, between Australia and Baku. And how are you spending your time? Uh, I spent my time back in the US at the moment. Um, although I leave 
in just a couple of days to to go back to the UK to start all my my preparation for Baku. Um, so just a bit of time off, um, and then back to back to work next week. Okay, so where in the US exactly are you at the moment? Uh, I'm in Houston, Texas. I'm in uh, my home where I live. Oh, right. And that's where you moved to when you were younger, was it? Were you about six or so when you moved there? Yeah, yeah, I was six years old. This is where I've spent most of my life here, so. Yeah, I mean, you, you, your career, really, when you look back at it, it, it is quite heavily based in the States, whereas you, if you compare to some other drivers, they came across to, to Europe when they were quite young. So is staying in the States to cart a more viable option now for, for North Americans rather than having to leave family and friends and, and live thousands of miles away? It is completely different, I think racing in america compared to racing in europe obviously i grew up in america and i i found the right people that were able to teach me the right things and you know it it is very competitive over here in the u.s the the u.s karting scene was very competitive and you know it really made me made me work hard even when i was young and you know over in europe is it's just a bit of a different different atmosphere i don't think it's required to go to europe i think definitely at some point it is good to could to, to experience it um because it is a bit different but um you know i'm happy that i spent most of my time in the us and you're originally from um north carolina is that right yep yeah, and so the move that you made to Texas was that purposefully for karting was that purposefully for you and your career no, that that move wasn't um, for karting. It's more for um, my parents' job. But um, you know, I am glad it worked out this way, since um, you know the karting was quite big in Texas. So I'm just happy it worked out this way. Coming up are some races that you've done particularly well at previously: Imola, Catalonia, Red Bull Ring. Um, yep. are, those, are those the kind of circuits where you feel like you can gain a points advantage? Yeah, I think, um, you know, those tracks, I've, you know, I think I podiumed at all of them last year. And, um, you know, we're going back to Europe after Baku, which is, I think, when we'll get into the thick of the season and, um, you know, we'll really need to show show the results at, at the beginning. And I think, you know, if we show a good result at the beginning of that European season, we'll start to be really strong throughout throughout those races and I think especially starting as Imola as the first European round which is um, one of my favorite tracks and in a place where I've always had really good success it's good to go there um, for one of the first European rounds to to really get confidence high. So I ask every driver I chat to which circuit that you've never driven on before are you looking forward to the most this year? Um. I was looking forward most to Jeddah, um, but now that we've already raced at Jeddah, um, which I have to say is probably my new favorite track. Um, at the moment, I'm looking most forwards to to Baku and Monaco. Um, I I really can't decide which one I want to want to drive up more, but I really want to go to both of them really bad, and I'm really looking forward to it. I love love street courses and so yeah why is Jeddah your favorite what makes it your favorite you've just said it's your favorite why um it was just the aspect of why well, I, I love high speed corners and i mean Jeddah is basically a bunch of high speed corners with zero room for error which as a driver like not knowing if you're going to hit the wall or not is um really satisfying especially when you do you know, a good lap in, in qualifying, for instance, like qualifying was one of the most satisfying things. I, even though I was, I was, I was far off, the lap I did was, was good for me. And, um, you know, it felt amazing to drive. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, you do have those street circuits coming up where the, the walls are also quite close as well. Um, and, and especially Baku, you know, it can either punish or reward the brave. So have yeah. you got any, any thoughts in mind of how you're going to approach that next race? 
Um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to Baku, and I think just the main thing for me is a rookie. I don't know the track very well, and would just be to to take it slowly in practice and and build it up, not you know wreck the car in the first few laps and try to get all all laps on track to to be useful and and go in a good direction. You know, of course, you want to be be good in practice, but it all happens in qualifying and I want to make myself fully prepared for for the qualifying session well yeah I mean it, it, can't, it does look like you're um you're very good and very handy at the street circuits after Melbourne so you know and and uh I I'm hoping for the best for you Jack really wish you the best of luck in in the coming races and hopefully we can catch up again at some point this season yeah for sure thanks yeah, well, thank you so much uh, for joining me. And also, thank you for watching. Um, please don't forget to like and subscribe to the Road to F1 YouTube channel and also follow us on social media.